ones like these, we need a Savior. Amen. 402, as we continue singing footsteps of Jesus, our junior church can be dismissed as we sing on the second verse. We'll sing all four verses, lifting our voices together this morning. Let's stand as we sing 402. Mrs. Chandler to come and share a special in song with us at this time. Truth to ponder. 
take your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. Proverbs 4 and verse 23. That's one of my favorite songs. He became the sinner's friend. Oh, glorious love. Amen. Thank you so much for singing that. It's good to be back. I always miss you when I'm away. I hope you miss me. <laughs> we traveled about 3,000 miles in our old minivan. And uh, we had a wonderful trip. And, uh, but we missed you, and uh, we're glad to be back together. That was a lot of traveling, so we've already started thinking. Of course, we did a little more than take Mandy down to Florida. We, we had some diversions. We ended up in Tennessee for a few days at Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge. and So we had a good time, and, uh, but we're glad to be back together but when we were coming back I kept up with the mileage and I said to Jennifer we're almost at 3,000 miles that's a lot of traveling uh, but uh, we had a wonderful time and trust you all had a good week and we're glad to be back together Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 we're in a series called things every believer ought to know and one such thing is this we ought to know that what we put in our mind will affect our life. It's one thing we ought to know. We ought to know how to have a Christ-like mind so that we can have a Christ-like life. And so that's why I had you turn to Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. Now notice what it says. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep. That word keep there is a very strong word. In fact, it was a military term. And it meant to guard. It, it spoke of a soldier who would guard a very important post. It means to guard. It means to protect. It means to preserve something that is very important. Something that is vitally crucial. Now what is it? Well, what are the next two words? The heart. Keep the heart. Now you say, well, what is the heart? Now, let's go back two weeks, or maybe it's three or four weeks now. But remember I said that there is a trinity to our nature. We're created in the image of God. He's a triune God and there is a trinity to our nature. We are body, soul, and spirit. And we looked at all of that. But remember we talked about the soul. The soul, that's the heart here. Our soul, the real you inside of your body. It encompasses your thinking. It encompasses your intellect, your mind, your emotions, and your will. You will to do certain things, and you will not to do other things. But that's the heart. It's the soul. It's you. It's the self, yourself. It encompasses your personality. Your reasoning, everything, your, uh, uh, the psychological part of you. But it encompasses your mind, your intellect, your emotions, and your will. Now that is to be protected, the scripture tells us here, at all costs. Your mind, your thinking, is to be protected at all costs. Key, protect. Guard, preserve the heart, your soul, your mind, your emotions, your will. Notice what it says. With all, all diligence. All diligence. 
Now that word diligence there, by the way, one of the things I picked up in South Carolina was a cold. You can probably tell that. So hopefully I'm not too scratchy. So, uh, oh, water. Yeah, I thought, yeah, if you don't, that'd be wonderful. Thank you. All right. But with all diligence, now what does diligence mean? Well, I'm going to give it to you. Here's what it means. Careful and persistent work and effort. Thank you so much. Careful and persistent work and effort. Care, great care, great care. Industriousness, rigor, rigor, meticulousness. It's very important. Meticulousness, thoroughness. Perseverance, <laughs> persistence, tenacity, dedication, commitment, tirelessness, doggedness. You get the idea? This is how we are to keep our hearts, protect our hearts, preserve our hearts with great thoroughness and meticulousness meticulousness and tenacity and commitment and dedication and persistence and perseverance. Why? For. See that next word for? It's going to tell us why. Why am I going to do this? Why am I going to go to great lengths to protect my soul, my thinking, my mind? Why? For out of it, out of your soul, out of your heart, are the issues, that word means the outgoings, are the outflowings of life. That's why. Because what enters into your mind and into your heart, what shapes the real you inside of you, your soul, is making you who you are and who you will be tomorrow. Those things that go in are determining who you're going to be, who you are and who you're going to be. They are determining how you're going to live your life. You see, out of it, out of the heart, out of the soul, are the outflowings, are the issues, are the outgoings of life. You are going to live your life according to the condition of your heart. According to the thinking of your heart, your soul, your mind. And so, what's he saying? That being true, you're going to live according to the way you think. That being true, you better keep, you better protect, you better guard and preserve your mind, your heart, your soul with all, not, not with some, with all diligence. Why? For out of it are the issues of life. You're going to live according to the condition of your mind, according to the condition of your heart, according to the condition of your soul. Fast forward to chapter 23. Still in the book of Proverbs, chapter 23. I want you to mark this. I was taught this as a teenager right after I got saved. And I'm so thankful I was. I heard this for the first time at church camp, the camp I met Jennifer about years and years before we ever met. Proverbs 23, verse 7, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. And I remember Brother Piggott, the evangelist, saying, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You remember the old saying, Physically speaking, you are what you eat. You ever heard that? You are what you eat. Well, spiritually speaking, you are what you think. 
what you think about, what you think upon. You see, it's simply the, really it's just simply the, the laws of sowing and reaping. And you know the laws of sowing and reaping. What you sow and <laughs> what you plant, that's what you reap. And so you're going to reap what you sow. Now think about it in terms of what you put in your mind, okay, what you think about. You're going to reap what you plant, what you sow. But the law of sowing and reaping goes further than that. It says you're going to reap more than you sow, okay? You're going to reap more than you sow, okay? And then there's a third aspect to that reaping and sowing, and it's this. You're going to reap later than you sow. So you plant the seed, and then the harvest comes somewhere down the road. Okay, but you're going to reap what you sow. What you're putting in your mind is going to affect your life. You can argue with that all day long. You can say, it doesn't bother me. I'm telling you, it doesn't affect me. You don't need to argue with me. I did not write the Bible. Okay, God says it. If you want to argue with what I'm telling you and tell me it doesn't affect you, you have to take it up with the Lord because he is the one who says it does, not me. But he clearly tells us that we're going to reap what we sow, we're going to reap more than we sow, we're going to reap later than we sow. And in that same Galatians chapter 6 passage, he says this, he that soweth to his flesh, if you want to feed the flesh, by the way, there's an order to the things I've been teaching us. Remember, we talked about the, the trifold enemy that we face, the world, the flesh, and the devil. All right, so hopefully when I say, if you want to feed your flesh, you're with me now because we've talked about it, we've studied it. Hopefully you know I'm talking about that old sinful nature within you, that old flesh, that old Adamic nature that you were born with, okay? Here's what the scripture says. He that soweth to his flesh, if you want to satisfy and gratify your flesh and the sinful desires of your flesh, here's what the scripture says. He that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, <laughs> So that tells me as a believer, when I feed on the wrong kind of things, I'm going to reap eventually, I'm going to reap a harvest of corruption. That's what the scripture tells me. If I satisfy and gratify my flesh, if I take in the things of the world and the flesh, eventually I will reap a harvest of corruption. That's what it's telling me. Now listen, get this, mark it down in your heart because this is a fact. Listen, our, our life, our character takes on the complexion of our thoughts. Okay? Our character, our lives take on the complexion of our thoughts. That's what your verse there is saying in Proverbs 23, verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Our character takes on the complexion of our thoughts. So that being so, I need to understand, okay, all right. Since my character is going to be shaped and formed by my thoughts, by the condition of my mind and heart, I need to understand, well, how do things get into my mind and how do things fashion my heart? Well, let's just say that when you were born, your parents stuffed cotton balls in your ears and put a blindfold over your eyes. How much do you think you would learn? Not very much, right? If you couldn't hear anything and you couldn't see anything, you wouldn't learn a whole lot. You see, what I'm getting at is this. There are gateways 
into our mind, gateways into our hearts, gateways into our soul. What are the gateways? Our eyes and our ears, right? What we see and what we hear, those are the gateways into our minds and into our hearts. They're sort of like the doors and windows of our soul. Sort of like the doors and windows of, of our minds, of our hearts. The bottom line is this. Everything we see, now I want you to think about it. Everything we see and everything we hear is being stored in the filing cabinets of our minds. And once it's in there, once it's in there, you can't control it. It'll control you. Once those thoughts, once those pictures, once those images, once those philosophies are in there, they will begin to influence your mind, your heart, your thinking. They will begin to shape you and mold you into the person you are and the person that you are going to be. Listen, it's very simple principle. Input determines output. It's, it's just that simple. Input determines output. What you're putting in is going to determine what comes back out. Programming determines production. Programming determines production. And that's why, had you turned to Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23, it's telling us that a properly controlled thought life is not just important. It's imperative. It's not incidental. It, it, it's fundamental. And that's why the writer of Proverbs is saying, listen, it, you've got to put guards about the gateways of your mind because when those things get into your mind your mind thinks about them and it fashions your heart and your soul it makes you who you are and who you will be and out of your mind out of your heart are the issues of life you begin to act those things out you begin to act upon your thinking <laughs> everything that you look at think about it everything that you look at Everything that you listen to, all of those things are being stored in your mind. And the scripture tells us, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now I'm going to get real deep now. All right? If you never allow those things into your mind, your mind can't think on those things. Your mind can't think on those things, and your, you won't act on those things. It's just that simple. If you don't let it into your mind, your mind won't think about it, and it won't shape your heart and your soul such that you live according to those things. That's why the scripture says you've got to put guards about your mind, about your heart. You cannot allow those things into your mind. They will deceive you. They will shape you and press you into their mold, that philosophy, that mindset, that way of life. By the way, this needs to be considered positively as well as negatively because this principle that I'm sharing with you is just as powerful positively as it is negatively. That is this. If we put the right kind of things in our mind, we'll get the right output. All right. Not only are we to keep the wrong things out of our minds, we are to put the right things into our minds, and then we will get the right harvest. We'll reap the right kind of fruit. The harvest will be right. That's why Paul told Timothy, exercise thyself unto godliness. Exercise thyself unto godliness. Not just keeping the wrong things out, putting the right things in. See, the mind is like a computer. 14 billion cells. 
And again, input determines output. Remember the computer teacher telling us, listen, junk in means junk out. The, the programming determines what the computer will do. It's not going to do anything that it's not programmed to do. Programming determines production. If you don't put it in, you don't program it, you're not going to get it back out. It'll only do for you what you do for it. And our mind is the same way. So, what it boils down to is this. I have a choice. As a Christian, I have a choice. I can say, you know what? It's not really that important. It's not going to really affect me or influence me. I have a choice. I can put worldly things into my mind. I can do that. I can put fleshly things into my mind. But I'm going to tell you something. If that's my choice, <laughs> I'm going to reap a harvest of corruption. That's what the scripture tells me. I can choose to put these wrong things into my mind. I can, I can choose to look at the wrong things. I can choose to listen to the wrong things. I can choose to be influenced by the wrong kind of examples and philosophies and influences. I can choose to do that. I can feed the old nature if I want to because it's still part of me. But let me tell you what's going to happen. All right? In fact, this verse is so important. Turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 11. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 11. You can choose to look at the wrong things, to listen to the wrong things, to be influenced by the wrong things. That's your choice. It's the wrong choice. It's a bad choice. It's a sinful choice. Here's what's going to happen. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 11. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 11. Dearly beloved. Now dearly beloved. Peter's, his heart's in this. <laughs> dearly beloved. I bese I'm begging you. I beseech you. I beg you. As strangers and pilgrims. He's talking to Christians. You ever heard the song, we're just strangers and pilgrims passing through? This world is not our home. That's what, exactly where that came from. It's what Peter's saying right here. We don't belong down here. Our home is in heaven. But right now, God has left us here and he's commissioned us. We have a job to do, but we we're, we don't belong down here. We're strang strangers and pilgrims down here. He says this, abstain. We know what that means. Stay away from it. Stay away from it. Abstain from fleshly lusts. Those old things that your old nature desires. Those old things of the flesh and world. Now look at it. Look at it. Fleshly lusts which what? War against the what? The soul. The soul. When we, let, when we look at the wrong kind of things, we listen to the wrong kind of things, we allow the wrong kind of influences into our minds through the eye gate, the ear gate. Those things, you know what they do? They start a war. I didn't make it up. That's what it says. A war. Those things start a war against your soul, against your mind. Boy, they go to battle against your mind, against your thinking, against your emotions. They get them all twisted and turned and warped against your will, all a part of the soul. And it's your will that determines what Ultimately, what you do, the choices you make, the decisions you make, 
If you allow these things into your mind, they will wage war against your soul. That's what, that's what the scripture says. They go to battle against your soul. They will deceive your mind like we talked about this morning. By the way, one of the things I was thinking about this morning, Brother Greg, getting used to the dark. That's what we're doing. We're talking about the line and how close we want to get to the line and then we move the line. You know, when we move that line, what's happened? We, we just got used to the dark, that's all. Now we think the line's over here. It's okay. We just got used to it, you know. We're getting used to the dark. But I'm telling you, when we allow the wrong things into our minds through the eye gates, the ear gates, those things literally go to war against us, against our souls. They battle our mind, our, our thinking, our reasoning. They, they battle our emotions and our, our will. They just, they just wreak havoc on us. But we say, oh, it doesn't bother us. I can look at that. That doesn't bother me. Well, I have a choice. I can look at the wrong things, listen to the wrong things, or I can fill my mind with that which is godly and good and right and holy and pure. I have a choice. I can choose to put the right kind of things in my mind. Turn with me quickly to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Boy, I got all kind of clocks up here now. Look, see what Caleb found for me? Found this behind his desk in his room. Don't know how it got there. The dog must have put it there. I, I don't know. But I got that one and... and Brother Ron's got me this one up here, and I'm using my computer this morning. I notice it has a clock on it, and it doesn't even make any difference. <laughs> Philippians 4, <laughs> Brother Greg's just checking his watch there. <laughs> Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8, you know this verse, you know it. I can fill my mind with that which is right. I have a choice, finally, brethren. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, things that are right, things that are holy and godly, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things things. You know, when I think on these things, I'm saying yes to the mind of Christ. Remember, we're, we're told in Philippians chapter 2, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, right? Well, when I think on these things, I'm saying yes to the mind of Christ. Yes, I want the mind of Christ. And you know what? Listen, if you have the mind of Christ, you will have the life of Christ. If you think according to the way he thinks, you'll live according to the way he lived. If you have the mind of Christ, you will have the life of Christ. If you have the mind of the world, you will have a worldly life. You will not get a Christ-like life from a worldly mind. You won't. It's impossible. It's not going to happen. It will not happen. Remember, in you dwells both of these, the flesh and the spirit. Remember, the old nature, the old Adamic sin nature, that nature that you received when you were born, that old Adamic sin nature, and you have the spirit. If you're saved, you have the new nature in you. When you were born physically, you got that old nature. If you're born spiritually, born from above, you also now have the new nature. So you have those two natures. Now, I'm, listen, let's make this as simple as we can possibly make it. Whichever nature you feed the most is going to be the nature that dominates your life. It's that simple. It's that simple. Now, I want you to think about something with me. I want you to think about your daily living your daily life. And I want you to ask yourself a question. Now, 
in just a normal 24-hour day. Just a normal, one of my normal days. Think, think about it. Which nature am I feeding the most? Well, am I feeding the old nature more? Or am I feeding the new nature? Just think about the things you listen to. Think about the things that you look at. Think about the people around you. Think about your discussions. Think about the things you think about, the things ultimately you do in the decision. Are you, in just a normal 24-hour day, are you feeding your flesh more or are you feeding the spirit, the new nature? Think about it. Think about it. Whichever one you feed will be the nature that will dominate your Life. What are you taking in on a, on a daily basis? What are you thinking about? What, are, what influences are coming into your mind through the, through the eye gates and the ear gates? Think about it. It's a very simple but true principle. Whichever nature you're feeding is going to be the nature that is dominating your life. It's the difference between being Christ-minded and worldly-minded. It really is. It's just that simple. Why? Because as he thinketh in his heart, well, so is he. If I'm thinking on the things of the flesh and the things of the world, and that's what's infiltrating my mind and fashioning my heart, well, I'm going to be living a worldly life. It doesn't mean I'm out committing what people would call heinous crimes and sins, but I'm living a worldly life. I'm not really walking with God. It's not really my heart's desire and passion and burden to, to influence others for Christ and to have real fruit that honors and glorifies God and exalts Christ. I'm just sort of wrapped up in my thing. I'm just sort of doing my own thing, and I really don't, I'm really not that concerned about anything else. Now listen, there are a lot of people, back up, there are a lot of Christians who are worldly. You know why they're worldly? I want to tell you why they're worldly, because they spend the majority of the time nursing and nurturing their flesh. That's why I'm putting the wrong things in. And input determines output. And then, I, and then I wonder why I'm struggling. I wonder why there's no, why, why am I not different? Why am I not making a difference? Why am I not having an impact? Why am I struggling so much? Input determines output. Programming determines production. I'm putting the wrong things in, and guess what? I'm getting the wrong things out. I don't really have a passion and a desire to love God and love others like I should. I'm just sort of wrapped up in my own thing. And then there are people we know who love the Lord. Their lives are different. We can tell they're walking with God. Well, why is that? <laughs> because they are putting the right things into their mind, into their hearts, into their souls. Their minds are stayed upon Jehovah. Their minds are stayed upon the Lord and spiritual things in his word. That's why. The programming that goes into your mind. Listen. The programming that goes into your mind fashions your heart, fashions your soul, and determines what comes out of your life through your actions and decisions and words and attitudes and ambitions and all of those things. It determines all of that. Your character takes on the complexion of your thoughts. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Let me put it this way. You will never be Christ-like in your living until you are Christ 
minded in your thinking. And really, that is the bottom line. You're never going to be Christ-like in your living until you're Christ-minded in your thinking. All right, we're going we're gonna to have a little object lesson this morning. I should have put on the lapel, right? But I usually stay close to the pool. We're going to pretend this is my mind. Saturate. 
saturate our minds with the Word of God. We just put the right kinds of messages into our minds. Things that are in agreement with the principles, the precepts, the truths of God's Word. What if we put all of that in our minds? What if we put the right kind of programming into our minds? What if we hang around with the right kind of people and have the right kind of friends because we see their philosophies and their mindset, their influences? That, that will affect us. That will shape us. The, their priorities, their ambitions, their actions and attitudes, and all those things will influence us. What if we put in our minds things that are true? What if we put in our minds things that are honest? How about things that are just and things that are pure and things that are lovely and things that are of good report, things that are virtuous and things that are praiseworthy? What if we put all those things in our minds? You know what's going to come back out of our lives? Exactly, exactly what we put into our minds. You understand why the writer of Proverbs said to keep your heart your mind, your soul, with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Input determines output. Listen, you, I, we are not going to get Christ-like lives from a worldly mind. We can say it doesn't bother us. Let me tell you something. It bothers us. We're getting used to the dark. These things get in here and they they influence us. They call they <laughs> cause us to become numb to things that we should not be numb about. They infect us, infiltrate. You let the wrong things into your mind. They will go to war against your thinking. They will deceive you and you'll end up in sin. They'll twist up your emotions. They will affect your will. Pretty soon you'll be making decisions that you would have never made because you're thinking according to ways you would have never thought. It infects you. It influences you. It changes us. That is what the Bible teaches. That is the message of the Scripture. It's the message of the Scripture. Well, I'm done. What are you feeding your mind? Would you think about that this morning? What are you feeding your mind on a daily basis? Would it fall into the category of flesh? Or would it fall into the category of spirit? What are we thinking about? What are we allowing in? What are we allowing in? Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. What I allow into my mind is fashioning my heart and out of my heart are the issues of life. I will live my life accordingly. And that's something every believer ought to know. Let's pray. We love you, Lord, and thank you for our time together this morning. Lord, help us. Help us to take this to heart. Help me to take it to heart. Lord, I pray that we would look carefully into the mirror of your word this morning. And if we see areas that need correction, we would correct it. We would not ignore it. We would not excuse it. We would not try to rationalize it 
are justified, but Lord, we would repent. We would turn from it. Lord, we'd make real decisions today that we're not no longer going to allow the wrong kind of things to come through the eye gate or the ear gate. We're no longer going to allow the wrong kind of influences into our lives, into our minds, into our hearts, into our souls. Lord, help us to make real decisions today that we would keep the wrong things out and that we would put the right things in, that we would saturate our minds with your word. Help us, we pray, to make decisions and take action this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take our hymnals to 483. 483. Stayed upon Jehovah. Hearts are fully blessed, finding, as he promised, perfect peace and rest. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon thee. Let's stand together as we sing. My dad had a cold, and he gave it to Caleb and Mandy, and I guess to me too. So uh, anyway, Jennifer's only, she's the lone survivor so far, but uh, if you'll forgive me for that, I won't uh, spread that on to you, but thank you. Yes? Oh, good, good. So there is a list if you're interested in helping uh, with uh, those things that are being gather, gathered together for the, uh, uh, those who are suffering from the hurricane, there is a list in the back that's available for you, and we hope that you'll be able to help with that. Brother John McGurk, would you dismiss us in prayer, sir? Father.